In the last lesson, we saw how the trapezoid rule for numerical integration can be intuitively derived from geometric considerations. Today, we are going to link it back to the Taylor series, which will enable us to make further improvements in accuracy. Take a look at this picture. Let i as a function of x represent the summation of panels. So i of x5 is the area of the first five panels and i of x4 is the area of the first four panels. If we subtract i of x5 minus i of x4, we are left with only the area of the fifth panel. I've called it T5, T for trapezoid. This can be generalized to any panel, T sub j plus one, as seen here. The first two lines on this page show a Taylor series expansion for i of x plus h. Then we plug that into our expression for t sub j plus one. Notice that i of x sub j cancels out. In the last line, we have an expression entirely dependent on derivatives of i. If i is equivalent to the integral of the function f, then the derivatives of i are such as seen on the left side of the screen. I substitute those into the expression for t sub j plus one. Now we have an expression with f's instead of i's. Here is just a brief reminder of the forward finite difference expression for the first derivative. Basically, we Taylor series expand f of x plus h and then solve for f prime. We covered this more extensively in previous lessons, so feel free to check that out if you'd like more details. Here I substitute the finite difference expression into f prime and gather like terms. On this page, I'm just switching the order of two terms so the next step is more visually obvious. I also replaced f with y to make this compatible with notation we used in previous lessons. From the previous page, I have simply evaluated each t. It's as easy as plugging the numbers zero through five into the subscripts on each term. These represent the area of each trapezoidal panel under the sine curve. Here I have color coded the terms that will combine together when added. This will be shown in the next slide. The total area is the sum of all six trapezoidal panels. When I add all the t's from the previous page, I get the expression shown in the second line. For the time being, ignore what's inside the purple box. Just note that there is an h squared in front, so we can truncate this series and call it of order h squared. That is shown in big O notation in the third and fourth lines. This is in fact what we inferred in the last lesson by comparing the error for different mesh sizes. The trapezoid rule is of order h squared, and we have just proved that from the Taylor series derivation. To understand what's inside that purple box, we must consider the mean value theorem. Given an arbitrary function, we represent the area underneath the curve in red. There is a rectangle with the same area. The height of that rectangle is a function of some value x star. We don't have to know the exact value of x star. It's just important to know that x star is somewhere between x0 and x6. Here is the mean value theorem again, illustrated on a different function. The area of a rectangle is much easier to find. So instead of adding up all the f's on the left, which in our case are unknown, we simply multiply one value, f of x star, by the number of panels. That's more or less what I did in the second line here. Notice that by expressing n in terms of h, our order is reduced from h cubed to h squared. The last line shows the final result. So why did we do this? When adding together all the t's to find total area, instead of adding six different f double primes, it is simpler to represent it as one term. This is the idea behind the area of a rectangle in the mean value theorem. Another perspective on the mean value theorem is that there is a point x star on a function for which the derivative at that point is equal to the average rate of change. This is shown in purple and orange here. The slope of the purple line is approximately equal to the slope of the orange line. 
Here I've used the same x star from the rectangle area, so this is only approximate. However, for well-behaved functions, this is often a good approximation. If that's true for the first derivative, we can extend the idea to the second derivative, as seen here. Now we can substitute that expression for the second derivative, as seen here. After cleaning up a bit, we are left with the final result. This is called the trapezoid rule with end correction. Notice that it is of fourth order, so we have a much more accurate method than the trapezoid rule without end correction. That was only second order, h squared. So why is it called end correction? Probably because we are evaluating the first derivative at the left and right endpoints of the interval and using that to enhance accuracy. That's all for today. I wanted to show you how going through a Taylor series derivation can lead us to develop better numerical methods. In the next lesson, we will throw some numbers into this expression and compare our results to those in the previous lesson. Stick around for that.